Oh, wow. <laughs> They're both nice. Let's discuss feces for a moment. And their bat, which is filling. Okay, this is a what I've been selecting for. Which one do you think? That one? She wants a blue male, but uh, she doesn't have any choice. Okay, this morning we're working a color selection of a species. Uh, let's discuss species for a moment. Species is a human concept that nature doesn't really respect a whole lot. Uh, in nature, there are populations. Uh, some of those are easy to identify, let's say like white-tailed deer. It's the, they're easy to identify, they mate with each other, they rarely mate with any other uh, deer, although there are mule deer and, and white-tail hybrids, but you can tell the hybrids. Uh, other species are a lot more difficult. And that's true of most of the Lake Malawi uh, 600 or so species of cichlids. Uh, they hybridize. Uh, the hybrids sometimes become a species. In fact, I saw a study, DNA study, that indicates that average, on average, a new species uh, evolves every 47 years in the lake. And that's almost entirely via hybridization. Uh, what and it's driven, speciation in that lake is driven primarily by, I think, by female mate selection. Uh, females are genetically, pre have a genetic predisposition for certain color patterns. And the way a new species can arise is maybe on this one rocky outcrop, there's one male yellow fish and one female uh, blue fish. She wants a blue male, but uh, she doesn't have any choice. She mates with the, uh, the yellow fish, and you end up with a blue faced yellow, uh, a population of blue faced yellow fish. And those females, those hybrid females, probably want both colors. And so they preferentially select uh, males that, uh, uh, that have a blue face and yellow body. And so a new species arises. Uh, Oops, I need to aerate the bucket here. Okay, so this, we're, this is um, Protomelus tinyalatus. But I've been selecting these fish for, we call this one uh, uh, Protomelus tinyalatus sunset, and I'm going to show you why. Okay, this is a, what I've been selecting for, this is a normal red empress uh, male. So we set him aside. This is what I've been selecting for. In fact, this is uh, our breeder male. Now I'm going to do a really quick uh, beauty contest because we need to add. Well, let's talk about females first. So let me put this guy down here and I've already put in the breeding colony 20 big females and 20 excuse me 23 big females and 23 small uh, young females this is what I select for in females uh, a gold body because I think they throw the gold males these are typical female tiny lotus Red Empress, and don't have uh, that uh, gold color. And you also note this female has some red in her dorsal. I like that. That one doesn't have quite as much. Both of these are, are breeders, and, the, and in fact, they uh, are two of the 23 older uh, females. We only got a little over 200 juveniles out, although there are a lot of fry in the bat. 
that we didn't harvest. Uh, so, let's see, let me put this guy over here. Uh, so it's not, with 20 female, 23 females, that's not too bad. Uh, we like to get up to around 400 fry, but to do that, four to 600, do that, we have to have uh, 40 to 50 females in the breeding colony. Okay, I've set aside some young males that grew up. These were last breeding cycle, or BRUs, uh, that stands for Breeders Unsex. They grew up and, and uh, we're gonna look at them. Oh, wow. <laughs> They're both nice. <laughs> I know. That's more what I'm looking for, I think. That was kind oh. of... Wow, that was gorgeous. Yeah, he's gorgeous, but not really what I'm looking for in the strain. That guy might be. Beautiful fish, but not really what I'm looking for in this strain. Okay, guys, cooperate here. I don't know. Yeah, I like him. Yep. Boy, these are some nice, nice fish. Uh, but what I'm looking for in this strain is something that looks like a sunset. That's the name. Let's put our breeder male up here and compare these guys to him. Oh my. Yeah. <laughs> what do you do? I'm, I want three males in this moving colony. And we've got five. I don't like that uh, one. Yeah. I think we'll remove him. He doesn't want to go. I think this one's kind of red, but. So you think full ham? I think, I don't know. Which one do you think? That one? Uh, he's a little too red. So we're going to go with these three males. The black barring in them right now is their fright pattern. That goes away when they're not scared. Well, down in there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put these three males in the two, oops. Yeah, the two females we were looking at. In their vat, which is filling. Oops. Well, we're supposed to swim out. Okay, we got those put up. Got a bucket of guppies, I'm going to dump in there. We keep theater guppies and there's a huge population of them in, in this vat. Gives the adults a chance to get used to uh, little fish and maybe not eat their fry. And the fry, so go ahead and show them. We have two fry cages in there. And the, those are cylinders with bottoms on them. Uh, they're on legs. Here, I'll pick one up. They're on legs to hold them up off the bottom. Uh, some of the fish like going under them. Uh, and I've got uh, two cichlid hotels in each one. It's PVC with aquaculture netting. The PVC hole uh, makes it sink. The aquaculture netting will float. And that gives the fry some cover too. Okay, so just by a little bit of selection, we've managed to uh, create a fish that looks considerably different from the species as it comes out of the lake. Uh, we also maintain the regular red empress Although I have to admit, I select for a little bit more red than you would get out of a fish out of the lake. It's really hard not to take pretty fish. And 
some somebody's going to buy some really nice <laughs> red emperors here because uh, uh, our sunsets uh, because I picked I only wanted three males so the rest of these are going to get sold okay good fish keeping <laughs>